फर्स्ट लेट्स गेट्स ओरिएंटेड टुवर्ड्स दिस पिक्चर हेयर इज द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर एंड हेयर इज द इंटरनल स्पिंक्टर हेयर इज द एक्सटर्नल स्पिंक्टर इज दिस एक्सटर्नल स्पिंक्टर इज मेड बाय पेल्विक फ्लोर मसल्स and here i have drawn rectum and anal canal similarly this is the internal sphincter of the anus and this is the external sphincter of anus and this is made by pelvic floor muscles same pelvic floor muscles is making up the external sphincter of both urethra and anus and you know the urinary bladder is composed of detrusor muscles so from urinary bladder sensory information goes to the spinal cord and autonomic fibers sympathetic parasympathetic fibers comes to the bladder and also somatic nerve somatic motor nerve that is pudendal nerve through root value s2 s3 s4 also comes to the external sphincter of both bladder and anus so here i have drawn the somatic sensory supply that is going to t t10 t11 l1 l2 level so here i can write like t10 so t it is t10 t11 l1 l2 root so from here somatic sensory information goes to all three levels like t10 t11 l1 l2 and from these segments sympathetic supply also comes to the bladder and here you can see this sympathetic supply is coming and it is innervating the detrusor muscle through beta 3 receptor you need to know this beta 3 because we have drugs for beta 3 called mira begron we need to use it sometimes in pathological states uh, i will talk later and from here you can also see sympathetic supply also coming to the internal sphincter here through alpha 1 receptors we also use drugs for alpha 1 receptor high internal sphincter similarly sensory information also goes from here to the s2 s3 s4 level as well it is also going to this level and also going to s2 s3 s4 level so here i have drawn this and this through dorsal horn the sensation goes to here and from the anterior root parasympathetic nerve comes through an innervates through m3 receptor muscarinic receptor similarly somatic motor fiber comes and it in innervates here similarly similar is for this anal sphincter sensory information goes here and sympathetic fiber comes sensory information goes at the sacral level parasympathetic fiber comes somatic motor fiber comes to innervate the external sphincter so both for, for bladder and anal sphincter is similar innervations through same spinal cord segments so let's suppose i have just uh, gone to bathroom and i have voided urine and now my bladder is empty and now it is again starting to getting filled so let's suppose uh, this is 50 ml has filled in the bladder now let's suppose 100 ml 150 ml so when there is 150 ml urine in the bladder what happens that uh, this stress receptor gets activated and this sends sensory information to the t10 to l2 level and when the sensory information goes it fires the motor root level motor root fibers sympathetic fibers and it discharges here and through beta 3 receptor there is relaxation of the detrusor muscles so t10 l1 t10 t11 l1 l2 tells bladder that don't contract go on filling because it is just 150 ml you can fill up to 400 ml you have that capacity so why are you getting irritated now so go on filling so it goes on filling like 150 ml 200 ml 300 ml 400 ml now it becomes 400 ml now the sensory information from here initially it went to thoracolumbar outflow now it is so distended that this information is also going to s2 s3 s4 level and s2 s3 s4 thinks that oh it is so distended 
uh, I need to uh, con uh, fire this parasympathetic fibers. Uh, uh, parasympathetic fibers S2, S3, S4 to contract the detrusor to expel the urine. But uh, this S2, S3, S4 segments think that first of all I need to ask uh, frontal lobe because he is intact currently. So our pathway from S2, S3, S4 till uh, frontal lobe via spinal cord brain stem is intact. The road is clear. So we can ask him uh, whether he is in the appropriate environment in the social appropriate uh, uh, social circumstances there to void or not. So he, he sends information to cortex and frontal lobe uh, decides that oh this time is not uh, accurate or not appropriate for voiding. I need to wait for like uh, 15 minutes or 10 minutes and then I will go to void. Then he sends inhibitory signals down and then this in this parasympathetic fibers got inhibited and this parasympathetic does not discharge. And the bladder again goes and feeling like feeling like it reaches 400 ml, 500 ml. Now the sacral centers think that oh it is going so big, uh, so I need to again ask uh, frontal lobe what he will do, whether he will void or because it, it it will burst the bladder. So I can't wait so long. See, I, so he again sends information to the frontal lobe, and frontal lobe tells that oh, oh okay I understand your concern. So but uh, I need to go to toilet. So I need to wait at least uh, 45 second or one minute. So um, you need to. Oh, hold for that but uh, this center says that oh i cannot hold you you send information to someone else i cannot do your task uh, i cannot do your job so it uh, starts contracting this uh, spring uh, this detrusor muscles so he sends frontal lobe sends another signal to somatic nerves pudendal nerves that uh, okay you go on firing your uh, nerve fibers to contract the external sphincter so that voiding does not occur. So this somatic pudendal nerve fiber fires and this external sphincter gets contracted and uh, till he reaches the bathroom for voiding this external sphincter is contracting and holding urine but as soon as he reaches to the toilet seat and he starts uh, before voiding this external sphincter gets relaxed. The, in, the stimulatory signals in the pudendal nerve gets inhibited. So this is not firing. So this got relaxed. So who told uh, this to not fire now? The frontal cortex told. Because frontal cortex has told that you fire now and when he reached to the bathroom, to the toilet seat for voiding, then he again told, okay, you don't fire now. I need to uh, void so it does not fire and it relaxes so basically this is reflex pathway it can occur at uh, this sacral level itself it does not require higher control center but why higher control center is required because sometimes we need to voluntarily hold urine or sometimes we need to voluntarily void urine so for example I am I need to go to exam for three hour duration so uh, I'm so before going to exam uh, I need to void urine because in the undream I may need again feel to void so before going let's void so I can voluntarily void no and sometimes I can voluntarily hold urine so to voluntarily void voluntarily hold hold urine this higher centers is required otherwise even if we do transaction of the spinal cord above sacral level this reflex will occur so you might think that during a spinal shock phase there is retention of the urine and stool so why does it occur if the reflex pathway is intact so as the name implies it is the shock phase so in the shock phase that this is fibers do not fire there is no tonic contraction so there is flaccidity of the bladder so there is retention of the urine in the interim period we need to do intermittent catheterization but when the shock phase is over, this reflex returns and patient is able to do this micturition defecation through this reflex pathway, through this micturition reflex defecation reflex. 
सो आई वॉज टॉकिंग डैट आई हैड रीच टू बाथरूम फॉर वॉयडिंग ओके सो आई एम इन टॉयलेट सीट एंड आई एम वॉयडिंग यूरिन सो वाइल आई एम वॉयडिंग so you you might have experienced or if you have not experienced noticed uh, then you can uh, experiment it like while you go to bathroom for urination feel the sensation around your anus so uh, while you are urinating there is a constriction or contraction of the pelvic floor muscles around your anus that is external anal sphincter so why does it occur to not let the urine or to not let the stool pass out to not let the poop pass out during that period because you know our internal sphincter is not under our control this internal sphincter of this anus and bladder both is not under our control but external sphincter is under our control because we have somatic fibers innervating this pudendal nerve supply is there so we can contract the pelvic floor muscles with our will so when you are um, voiding urine so what happens that internal sphincter of this also gets relaxed because the nerve supply is same parasympathetic s2 s3 s4 is supplying both so when this gets relaxed this also gets relaxed but you don't want to uh, pass your stool at that time so what you do you fire the s2 s2 s3 s4 at this level to contract the external sphincter of the anus to hold the stool but when you have watery diarrhea if you have experienced any time um, i don't know whether you have experienced what i have experienced when there is so much watery diarrhea when i go for uh, urination sometimes uh, there is slight leakage of the stool as well because the wa- stool is so watery that it even leaks when i do external anal sphincter contraction with my voluntarily will but uh, other times the stool is formed a stool like bristol 3 4 stool so when a stool is formed it cannot leak out the external anal sphincter but when there is so watery stool then sometimes uh, little leaks leak out occur when even you are trying to constrict it while urinating on the other hand when you go for defecation so there what happens that when you sit in the toilet for toilet seat for defecation then urination also occurs a little so when you relax the external anal sphincter to pass the poop then external anal uh, external sphincter of this urethra also relaxes to to pass urine but you can also hold it with training like wh- while uh, you have learned to hold the passage of a stool by contracting external anal sphincter so similarly you can also learn to contract external urethral sphincter your pelvic floor muscles near the urethra while passing a stool but there is no use of learning that because while we are defecating we can pass urine there is no problem in that but while we are urinating we can't pass a stool we don't need to pass a stool because that is will be inappropriate for us so that is about innervations of this bladder and anal sphincter now uh, let's see this picture so here you can see this is the spinal cord and this is the vertebra so our spinal cord segments and vertebra does not corresponds as it comes down so you can see the spinal cords inside l1 vertebra level at the lower border of l1 but the nerve fiber is still traversing down and vertebra is up to here coccyx so till there what happens that this nerve fiber travels in the this csf like a bunch a bunch of threads that we call cauda equina so let's suppose there is any disc herniation at this level l5 s1 so 
and this suppresses this S2, S3, S4 nerve fibers. So you know that S2, S3, S4 these are supplying parasympathetic fibers to our bladder. But when those it gets damaged or compressed, then it cannot fire to contract the detrusor to expel the urine. So retention occurs, urinary retention occurs. So in that condition, if you check post vital residual volume like PVRU, it is more than 200 ml. More than 200 ml we call significant PVRU because it is not contracting, the tracer is not contracting, so retention is occurring. But when let's suppose this is the urinary bladder and this is the internal sphincter, this is the my heel of hand is internal sphincter and this is the urinary bladder so when it goes on distending distending what happens that this also got distended little bit and when there is little bit distance and what happens that leakage occurs leakage of urine occur that we call overflow incontinence because of over distension there is incontinence but that incontinence is not due to detrusor contraction because the detrusor cannot contract because parasympathetic is damaged it has been compressed but it is due to overflow over distension so in that condition what you have to do you have to constrict the detrusor contract the detrusor you have to give m3 agonist so that detrusor can contract no so what are the m3 agonist like bethanicol So in uh, this damage of the S2, S3, S4 retention occurs. Similarly, when there is a, like a stroke in the frontal lobe or let's suppose normal pressure hydrocephalus or parasitical meningioma or any pathology of cerebral cortex that is damaging the inhibition center that is coming from the cortex, there will be Disenergy between external sphincter and detrusor contraction that we call dysnergia. What is the function of uh, frontal cortex? It contracts the external sphincter so that we don't void. Even the detrusor is firing to contract, but we contract voluntarily. External, external urethral sphincter so that urine flow does not occur. But let's suppose there is that uh, due to a stroke or due to any tumor or any demyelinating plaque that inhibition center is gone that is damaged. Then when you go to bathroom to void then we need to relax the external sphincter to void so at that time we need to inhibit the discharge on these fibers but inhibitory fibers is already damaged so it is not able to do that so this is already this is in contracted state even though detrusor is contracting to expel the urine but this is contracted state and this is not letting the urine pass so there is dysenergy between contraction and external sphincter external urethral sphincter that we call dysenergia between detrusor and sphincter normally there is synergy between sphincter and detrusor but due to some pathological states in the bones either in the cerebral cortex this there is dysenergia or other can be like uh, you know it occur it cause inhibition so if inhibition is gone what happens patient can void and will not have voluntary control over urine for example i am giving here talk and i feel need to void my bladder is like 450 ml pool but i need to void but i think that uh, i will go after 5 minute or 10 minute so i can hold it but uh, those persons cannot hold urine and passes at that time. So you, if you have seen patients with advanced Parkinson's, 
dementia, multiple system atrophy, they passes urine. They have urinary incontinence because those neurons, those frontal lobes that is discharging inhibitory signals is not working. That is damaged due to either neurodegeneration or infarct or whatever pathology, demyelination that has been damaged. So urine pass passes at inappropriate places and they may feel depressed about it. But if their insight is gone because of their neurodegeneration, they even don't bother about it. So advanced Alzheimer's dementia cases do not even bother when they are passing in the urine in the, while sitting or sleeping. So that becomes the problem. Another pathology that can occur is at here. You can see we have uh, sympathetic supply from T10, T11, T12, L1, L2. Let's suppose there is disc herniation or any meningioma or any meningomyelocil, any types of pathology, tumor or external metastasis that is compressing these, these fibers, sympathetic fibers, T10 to L1, T12, L1, L2. So what does the function of these fibers? These fibers hold the urine. As I told that when there is 150 ml, sympathetic fiber fires and tells the bladder you hold urine for till it gets 400 ml. But if, if this is damaged, it is not able to tell that. So at 150 ml patient goes on voiding, it cannot store till 400 ml. When the bladder fills 150 ml, it goes on voiding. So it will have increased urinary frequency. But there will be no retention because he is able to void. Parasympathetics are working. So these are some of the pathology that can occur in the bladder. You might have read classifications uh, of lipid classification called that one is uninhibited bladder that I told you that in cortex, cortical lesions, inhibition is gone. So patient voids anywhere. No, another is autonomic bladder or autonomous bladder another is sensory paralytic bladder another is motor paralytic bladder so what is sensory paralytic bladder motor paralytic bladder so sensory means sensory information is going through this pathway so if this pathway is damaged either due to diabetes or other causes of perineuropathy then patient is not able to sense that bladder is filled and bladder goes and distending distending and overflow incontinence occurs a motor atonic bladder is motor paralytic bladder is when this parasympathetic supply is lost due to either diabetes toxins or other uh, or causes of peripheral neuropathy then patient can sense that bladder is full because sensory is intact so he can sense but parasympathetic supply is not working so what you have to do you have to push the belly with the hand to contract the bladder to force it pass urine and we have also drugs uh, like we can use mirabegron i initially told that we, we can give mirabegron when the sympathetic supply is damaged to hold the urine we can give beta 3 agonist similarly we have drugs for m3 receptor like uh, bethanicol that is agonist and anti antagonists are flavoxate, solifenacin, darifenacin, trospium. So when do you give these anticholinergics? When there is overactive bladder, when it is contracting inappropriately and it causing incontinence. Similarly, we have drugs for alpha 1. So you may be knowing that uh, drugs like sildosin tamsulosin this blocks this receptor and it relaxes and retention can be relieved so we most often use in those in prostate hyper hyperplasia benign prostate hypertrophy but here we can also use if retention has occurred because it relaxes the bladder neck internal sphincter and patient can void and in some cases, if you are not able to delineate what is causing the bladder problem, 
where is the problem then in those cases we do urodynamic study so we see the relation between detrusor muscles and internal sphincter so sometimes uh, as i told detrusor is contracting but sphincter is not relaxing or sometimes detrusor is not contracting but sphincter is relaxing so to study those where is the pathology um, we have to do urodynamic studies like if detrusor is not even able to relax with drugs then we have to destroy this no no i mean to say that if internal sphincter is not able to uh, relax then we have to destroy this internal sphincter by transurethral resection and when you destroy it what what occurs incontinence can occur so we also give anticholinergic with tur transurethral resection to prevent that but those surgical modalities are last options initially we try to manage with drugs